Don't worry. German engineering guarantees that the Leopard 2 can effortlessly handle water obstacles up to 3.3 feet deep without breaking a sweat. Oops. It seems that Ukrainian tankers managed to drown a German tank. Why? Some kind of military strategy, perhaps? Things didn't exactly go as planned. This swamp turned out to be deeper than 3.3 feet. As you can see, the tank is completely submerged, which means the water here is over 9.2 feet deep. That's the full height of a Leopard 2. You can almost hear the German Chancellor grinding his teeth at this spectacle. But don't count the Leopard out just yet. Enter the Bergerpanzer II, an armored recovery vehicle that can pull tanks or any other stranded equipment straight out of the underworld if needed. Of course, it's German made too. You could probably guess that just by peeking inside. Cozy, right? Hit that like button if you've ever dreamed of having a room like this as a teenager. This machine weighs 40 tons. It can carve a path anywhere. Forest, swamp, you name it. The Leopard 2 was well and truly stuck. But as you can see, it's been rescued. The big question is, did this $12.8 million tank just turn into an oversized paperweight after its little submarine adventure? After all, the Leopard 2A4 comes loaded with high-tech features, a digital fire control system, automatic fire suppression, a wind sensor, a radio, a gunner's thermal sight with a laser rangefinder, an electro-hydraulic gun stabilizer, something akin to an onboard computer, miles of electrical wiring, oh, and batteries. Not exactly built for underwater excursions. So, what's the damage, Captain? Sure, the tank isn't watertight like a submarine, but don't worry, pumps are in place to handle water removal. Still, seeing is believing. At this moment, the Leopard 2 looks like a soggy cat, though the driver managed to stay almost dry. Incredible! This German beast works like it was designed for underwater missions. Now it's cruising along like nothing happened. Bravo! But it does beg the question, why risk such an expensive machine in the first place? The ability to cross underwater obstacles like this is something we'll need for operations in similar terrain. The crew has leveled up. Now we know how to do it properly. We're practicing these maneuvers because our plans include not just defense, but also offense. I'm impressed with these tanks. Compared to the T-64 and T-72 I used to fight with, this one is leagues ahead. Clearly, the Ukrainians were training to be ready for some serious action. They were pulling off moves that were impossible with Soviet-era tanks. Just a few weeks later, the Leopard 2 lived up to their expectations. Footage shows that this practice was anything but in vain. Within minutes, the crew had destroyed two Russian tanks and four armored vehicles. The map of the battlefield reveals that the Russians felt secure, with one flank protected by water and the other monitored by their aerial reconnaissance. They never figured out where the Ukrainian tank came from, but we know the secret. Take a close look at the camouflage on this Ukrainian Leopard. Doesn't look much like a soggy cat anymore, right? For a while, the Leopard ruled this field. But did you notice the unusual reactive armor on the Ukrainian Leopard? Actually, it's nothing other than Contact 1, a Soviet-era design. Each block contains an explosive charge with a compression-sensitive detonator. Ukrainian tankers humorously call them chocolate bars. When hit by a projectile, they explode, using their blast wave to neutralize the penetrating jet of anti-tank munitions. By the way, Ukrainians are also mounting these same explosive boxes on American tanks. You can find a full video about the M1 Abrams in Ukraine on our channel. But seriously, what's the deal here? Why are German tanks getting outfitted with outdated Soviet-era protection? The Leopard 2A4 boasts impressive armor. Its frontal armor is equivalent to 640 to 840 millimeters of steel, easily deflecting shots from any Soviet tanks of its time. But that time was the 1980s. Over 30 years have passed since the A4's debut, and modern munitions can now penetrate its defenses. However, newer Leopard 2 versions, A5, A6, A7, and even the A8, have been upgraded with additional composite armor modules and active protection systems. Thanks to Contact 1, even the Leopard 1A5, also deployed in Ukraine, 
has significantly improved crew protection. This machine was built to outdated standards. It's been a long time since its introduction. These days, with so many shaped charged munitions in play, we needed extra protection. So they added cumulative defenses to safeguard the crew. Many critics called the Leopard 1A5 a museum piece, but its gun and fire control system are exceptional. Ignoring that potential would have been a mistake. But don't get the wrong idea. Germany isn't sending only outdated gear to Ukraine. Meet the Panzer Haubitze 2000, or let's stop butchering German and call it the PZH 2000. Hit that subscribe button if you agree it's easier to say. In short, the PZH 2000 is an incredibly advanced and powerful self-propelled howitzer mounted on a Leopard 2 chassis. But instead of tank gadgets, it comes equipped with an 8060 mm barrel. Its armor, however, isn't exactly tank grade. So what do Ukrainian soldiers think about it? Even if a 152 mm shell lands nearby, I know I'm safe inside. Among artillery experts, the PZH 2000 is hailed as the world's most combat effective self propelled howitzer. And it's not just about the cozy interior. I input the coordinates, the type of shell, the fuse setting, and how it should activate. Wait a second. Is this a co working space in Palo Alto, California, or a brutal 155 mm cannon? I hit save and I'm ready to fire. On position, I just press two buttons, fire. The PZH 2000 boasts a record range of up to 42 miles with rocket assisted shells and a maximum firing rate of 10 rounds per minute. But the real magic? This beast can fire three rounds in quick succession at the same target, with each shell taking a different trajectory to land simultaneously. The autoloader operates with the precision of a guillotine. The loader's job? Quickly place the propellant charge. Ready. Fire. 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 Even though its firing positions are usually 10 to 20 miles from the front line, the PZH 2000 is a prime target for enemy counter battery fire. That's why, as soon as the last shell is in the air, the crew hightails it out of there to avoid becoming the hunted. And the result? The enemy bunker was destroyed. This howitzer leaves no room for survival. The key is accurate target coordinates. Target information comes from various sources, recon drones, fire observers, and we planned to show you the German counter-battery radar, Cobra. Finally, a name that makes sense. Cobra can detect up to 40 enemy firing positions in just two minutes. It also calculates the impact point of shells and missiles, adjusts the fire of friendly units, and warns about potential counter-battery threats. But operators of the counter-battery radar are a mystery. They don't give interviews, allow video recording, or let outsiders near their positions. Still, we've managed to find out how fire observers work with the PZH 2000. We work as part of a recon fire complex. Our tools include an artillery theodolite and a drone. I only see the enemy on the screen. But with Russian jammers often disrupting drone operations, the fire observer's main tool remains their own eyes. A group of six is moving into the private sector, 856, distance 1,500. Here's footage of that group being eliminated. It happened quickly, but the fire observers are as much a target as the PZH 2000 itself. 10 grad rockets landed just 100 to 200 feet away from me, but we're used to this now. However, Bakhmut has become world famous for its intense gunfights, where the legendary German MG3 machine gun has proven its worth. It's carried by all the heroes in today's videos, even the PZH 2000 crew. Some Ukrainian soldiers argue that the MG3 is superior to the American Browning M2. Hmm. Objection, Your Honor. I'm Team Ma Deuce. If you've seen our video about this machine gun, smash that like button. But let's hear from the Ukrainian troops. If it overheats, you can swap the barrel right in the middle of the fight. This is a crucial feature, because the MG3 boasts a fire rate of 1,200 rounds per minute. In prolonged battles, quick barrel changes mean survival. Not just for the gunner, but for the whole unit. 
Swapping the Browning M2's barrel, on the other hand, takes more time and adjustments. Another point, the MG3 weighs just 25.5 pounds with a bipod, and its 7.62 by 51 mm rounds are much lighter than the monstrous 50 caliber. This allows the gunner to fire from awkward positions. Let's face it, you're not climbing onto a fence with an M2. So that's another win for the German machine gun. What else? The bipod is super easy to adjust. Just shift it forward, take it off, and snap it into another notch. The belt links are disintegrating, easy to use. Once it's fired, that's it. But the MG3's effective range maxes out at 1,300 yards, almost half that of the Ma Deuce. One more reason why it's not used to hunt down Shahids. However, there is one piece of German weaponry that outshines the Browning M2 in taking down Russian drones. Enter the Gepard, the ultimate Shahid killer. This self-propelled anti-aircraft system hails from the 1970s, built on the first-generation Leopard chassis. Look at its cozy retro interior. Those Germans really know how to design a workspace. But how does it fare in battle? The radar picks up blips and shows the direction the target is coming from. The radar range is 10 miles or 7.5 miles, but you can narrow it to 5 miles. Once the target is locked, we track it until the system gives the green light to fire. Turns out, the Gepard's old-school radars are perfect for spotting slow-moving targets. Beyond its two radars, the Gepard packs a high-performance fire control system. Then it fires and the target is destroyed. The Gepard's guns have an effective range of about 3 miles. A few short bursts from its dual Orlikon cannons are enough to turn a Shahid into scrap metal. Watch how it works in action. Target down. Whew, incredible work. So, friends, what kind of weaponry does Ukraine need more of right now? Tanks? Howitzers? Or maybe more firearms? Share your thoughts in the comments.